The WCB vision is to eliminate injuries and restore abilities. In the event that we are unable to prevent an injury from occurring, we work towards reducing the impact of that injury on workers, employers, the workers' families involved, and any impacted stakeholders. And now for the second time, I will give it over to Tara. All right, testing, we're good? Okay. So thanks Pam, my name is Tara, I am a team leader as well and I'm just gonna talk about uh, a couple different topics here, the goal of effective claim handling. So first and foremost, we as WCB would like to prevent injuries from happening and unfortunately sometimes that's something we can't do and an injury does occur. In this situation, we wanna make sure that we're minimizing the impact to the worker but also to the employer, any dependents, Anyone who's involved in the work accident, there's more than just one person who is impacted by a work injury. So in order for us to minimize the impact, it involves the help from everyone. The employer, the worker, the care providers, making sure that we can talk about a return to work plan. Uh, so one way we want to do that is restoring function to the worker. So when an injury does occur, the worker is injured, we want to try and minimize that impact, have them return to work to their full um, abilities. Sometimes that doesn't happen though, and we do have to talk about accommodated duties and work with a worker to restore their abilities to the best of their uh, function allows them. So this ties into the next slide, which is the recovery and return to work. So with re recovery and return to work partnership, uh, we work with the injured worker, we work with the employer, the care providers, as well as a vast majority of staff at WCB. So our intent is to communicate with the employer, the worker and the healthcare provider to come up with a return to work program and to allow that worker to reintegrate themselves into the workforce. So during the claim process, there are a few key things that we do look at and that you should be aware of. So at this time, I'm actually gonna hand it back over to Pam and she's gonna talk about some of these key processes. When we talk about the key steps in the WCB process, at a high level, we're really outlining what each of us needs to do. This includes the injured worker, the employer, the healthcare provider, and of course, the WCB. The first step is to report an injury to the WCB and provide the details or information about the injury. The WCB would then review the information and make a decision, which allows us to move towards return to work planning and administering benefits. However, we also recognize that even before an injury happens, you as an employer have steps that you can take so that if an injury occurs, both you as the employer and your employees know what the next steps are. This may include uh -huh. developing a return to work program and process and then educating your staff so that everyone is familiar with the steps and their responsibilities. So if an injury occurs within your workplace, the process begins even before WCB becomes involved. Reporting an injury to the WCB. While this sounds like a straightforward process, we often find that not everyone knows whom is responsible to report the injury to the Workers' Compensation Board. We currently have approximately 48,000 employers across Saskatchewan, and on average, approximately 30% of every new claim submitted to the Workers' Compensation Board are from people who have never had a claim before. The worker, the employer, and healthcare providers all play an important role in submitting a claim to the Workers' Compensation Board. The WCB's receipt of the Workers' Initial Report of Injury, or W1, the Employer's Initial Report of Injury, or E1, or an initial report from the healthcare provider or hospital can all be used to set up a new claim in our office. Reporting to the Workers' Compensation Board as soon as an injury occurs or as soon as you become aware of an injury allows the Workers' Compensation Board an opportunity to communicate with all parties and work towards facilitating recovery and return to work.
When an injury occurs at work, it is important that the injured worker seeks medical attention immediately if required. When seeking medical attention, it is important to advise the healthcare provider that the injury occurred at work so that the healthcare provider can also submit their report directly to the Workers' Compensation Board. It's also the injured worker's responsibility to report the injury to the employer so that the employer can make the necessary report to the WCB and communicate any related or possible workplace accommodations and have that conversation right at the start. Lastly, it's important to report to the Workers' Compensation Board. All reports can be made by telephone, by email, by fax, or utilizing our online services. The sooner the information is received in our office, the sooner we can all begin the steps in the WCB process and begin working together as a team. When we talk about providing information, we are looking to understand how the injury occurred from both the worker and the employer. The healthcare provider should also advise on what information was provided to them regarding how the injury occurred, but most importantly, from the healthcare provider, we are looking to understand the medical diagnosis, treatment plan, and what restrictions the worker may have. The WCB strives to make timely and accurate decisions, and the sooner the complete information is received in our office, the sooner we can make a decision and facilitate recovery and return to work towards restoring abilities for your employees. While it is the WCB's responsibility to determine if an injury has occurred at work, it is necessary for us to have complete information related to how the injury occurred, what and where medical attention was sought, and what the diagnosed injury is. Decisions can be complex depending on the nature of the work injury, the complexity of the diagnosis, whether there are pre-existing conditions, and what WCB policies may apply. Although we are striving for timely decision making, we also want to ensure that we are making accurate decisions. The more complex a claim may be, in some situations may require more detailed information, which can delay our decisions. Although, um, actually I'm just gonna hand it over to Tara now to talk to you about return to work planning, thank you. Thanks, Pam. So return to work planning, I touched a little bit just at the very beginning about it being a joint effort between the employee, the worker, the employer, WCB and medical. Um, it is important that we know that we do have to take what the medical information is saying on file in order to support a safe return to work plan. So we do as a worker have a duty to participate in a return to work plan and as an employer, we also have a duty to support a return to work plan if available. So in these situations when there are return to works um, available, the WCB is there to communicate with the employer, work with you guys to try and come up with an accommodated position or an accommodated role while they can get back into the workplace and be able to have a successful return to work. So one thing to note, the longer that a worker is off work, sometimes the longer a claim can be. So the earlier interventions we have with you as well as the appropriate medical return to work plan is key in these situations. So with that, when an injury has been accepted and we are talking about uh, return to work plans or them being off for a specific period of time due to the medical information, we do administer benefits. So as indicated in the slides, uh, WCB does um, pay benefits in multi dimensions, so not only is wage loss paid, but we also pay for other things such as medical prescriptions that are due to the work injury. Or if there is a need, if it's a more severe injury, we'll pay for prosthetics or personal care, which will allow them to be able to maintain at home. Uh, also things such as temporary expenses. So if somebody normally mows their own lawn and because of the work injury that's over and above what their restrictions are, we can provide benefits in that regard. 
One thing to note, and this question comes up quite frequently from employers and from injured workers, is if they have a benefits program through employers. This is something that's outside the scope of WCB uh, and that would not be covered by us. So if there's a plan that would cover for eyeglasses or dental work, things like that, that is something that do, uh, WCB does not cover. So that's pretty much our presentation. So these are, again, the key steps in um, reporting an injury to trying to get the injured worker back to employment. Uh, so report an injury, provide the information, decide if a work injury is acceptable, uh, start the return to work planning, and again, administer the benefits. So at this time, I'd like to thank you guys all for coming and joining us for this short presentation.